Look at that! Yeah, it's gonna look so good. That is a gap. The man from Panama. Yep. <laughs> wow! Welcome back to the channel. So in the good spirit of feedback you guys gave us during Car Week, liking the behind the scenes informal stuff, we thought we'd go full vlog life. Today, well, the reason why I'm wearing this and all of this is that, uh, well, I'm an honorary judge at uh, Blenheim Palace for uh, the Salon Privé event. What we're doing today is um, award for the best design. So it's effectively, and I'm sure you can see that 275 in the reflection of my glasses, it's effectively um, what we think as a collective to be the most beautiful car. Thankfully, it's not too sort of in-depth and technical. I'm part of a panel of about 16 honorary judges, uh, which have to determine effectively what's the most good-looking car here. Look how thick that book is there. About 72 cars to judge. If anyone watched the recent uh, episodes from Pebble Beach, that is a gaff. So here we have an early example of nitrous oxide, uh, direct port injection, titanium valve springs and overnight parts from Japan. This is when the French episode of Ghostbusters came out. I mean, this might be cliche, but we might as well go home, hadn't we? I mean, isn't this it? I'm kind of judging this on of the 72 cars if I had to take one home. Right, and let's take the value out of it. Extremely partial to a 275, right? A 275 GTB. There's something about this. It is aggressive and classy in equal measure, despite the fact, and what's quite hard about this, weirdly, is we have to remove all knowledge of history and significance and any sort of race pedigree it might have. All of these cars, we have to purely base our decision on how they look, which actually makes it quite an enjoyable process because we don't have to dig deep into our notes and find out if it is uh, period correct. If anyone's wondering what that is, that is North American Racing Team. So if you ever hit a Ferrari referred to as a, a Nart Stripe, that's the history of where that terminology came from. Sounds cool as well. Good God, have you seen how clean that is? It definitely didn't even leave the factory that good. That is unbelievable. It almost looks like it's not real it's it. that clean. That is exceptional. 308. 308. Now yeah. that's 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 really special as well. It's cool. been beautifully restored, and to see it in, in the dark blue with the tan leather, non Tom Selleck spec. Non -Tom it's quite Selleck. nice, isn't it? Although we like yeah. Tom Selleck and we love that. that we part. do, yeah. But, but it is just, refreshing. I'm quite taken with the paint on the Dino. I think we're quite fortunate that for us in this particular category. It doesn't matter if it was an original Ferrari paint or not. It's just what no, looks nice. I think it's <laughs> right? what, what we like on the day, basically. Sure. What we think is beautiful. Cars we actually know about. <laughs> so we've got an MC12 here. We have an Enzo and a early Murcia Lago, which I'm hoping is a manual. Not that that counts anything towards what we're doing, which I find quite odd, because for me, I kind of care about how, how they drive or would drive. Yep. It is literally, we're talking about design. Like that is, that mm. is it. So regardless of me thinking it's cool because it has a manual gearbox, um, doesn't really factor into the aesthetics of it. The official title of this particular award, Car of Outstanding Design. Best looking car award, right? So this is something you often don't pick up on in photos on the MC12. Look at the delicacy of, the, of these veins. Interestingly, the Enzo being parked next to the MC12, there was uh, quite a lot of component sharing, like it was sort of based on the Enzo. My eyes, incomparable in terms of beauty. I think the Enzo's aged well, but this is different gravy. We've got to take rarity out of it. There's 50 of these. So that makes, that makes the Enzo look like a mass produced car. Comments below. Aesthetically, would you be going for the Maserati to your eyes or the, or the Enzo? It's actually a shame that this isn't in the uh, Concours. That is a hell of a good looking car. This is the De Tomaso P72. This is... That's an, that's an exhaust. Wow. Yeah, I mean, come on. Come on. As far as interiors go, look at the artisan craft of this. Look at it. Different world. So, sadly, that's not in my book, but if it was, it'd be well up there. What do you think about this thing? Comments below, what is this? What is it? It's like the man straddling an R8. It's quite hard, this. 
Well, we haven't got to here yet. <laughs> I, mean, we, we, I think we're still 40 to go. Oh, right. yeah. wow. it seems, have you been around the whole lot? Actually? Not yet, no. I sort no. of stopped at the pre-war stuff and I thought, yeah. mm, I'm out of my depth here. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I have to decide what it is you're really yes. Yeah, looking that's right. at and why. Yeah. And it's hard to remove the the con like if you're aware of the context and history of a car, it's yeah. hard to take that out of your mind and go based on purely design. Yeah, it's yeah. quite hard. I think yeah. also you have to consider what was influencing the car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. what, how how far ahead in terms of its conception right. was it to its then. its, yeah. its cohort. Yeah. And then you see other ones and you go, they're stunning in any day. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's the one you okay. you go for in a way. Throughout the day, there's also a supercar parade. Proper kit here, actually. Every year that we, we come back to Salon Privé, they up their game every single time. And it's a real event on the calendar now. It's um, truly, the turnout is exceptional. Yeah. Okay, we also have a Lamborghini Huracan Technica. Interesting thing about this, it might just be the last Huracan they make. No doubt they'll do a Technica Spider, but um, yeah, the lineage may be discontinued after this one. Tell me about this, this looks wild. So this is our new creation, so we launched okay. it here. Yeah. Um, so it's a Superformance Mark III Roadster. Right. Um, so it's a resto modded um, Cobra, essentially. Uh -huh. um, the engine alone in this car is a 50,000 pound option. So it looks it's, uh, it's a work oh, of art. Check of out art. This I mean, thing. it's this the sort is... of thing that you don't want to show with any grease, right? You want to keep what? this thing tidy. a machine. Um, but forged pistons, forged crankshaft, um, 560 brake horsepower, um, 530 pounds of torque. I mean, we could quite easily get more out of it uh, but when you think this sounds terrifying enough it's as terrifying it is. enough what does it weigh um, only right. 1100 kilos. right so that's plenty it, exactly. that's plenty to go at exactly okay but then it's got stuff like power assistance driving yeah. exactly um, this is a licensed shell right uh, little... exactly that so okay. the, the body itself is licensed by Shelby so, so it's an you... actual Cobra profile correct so, so when you think about how many I mean the Cobra itself is probably one of the most replicated cars on the planet sure. I yeah, mean there's yeah. kit cars uh -huh. loads of different companies doing it right um, this is the only one that's got the Shelby license that's the body. Cool. so it obviously cool. speaks volumes nice. for yes you know the actual build itself wow um, but they're generally about a 15 month build this one we actually flew in to get here for the nice. show nice um, so this one's available for sale uh -huh. and then we've got three more available for the allocation for this year that will be built ready and delivered right not to be top line basic or anything but this looks fantastic in silver it's actually quite Refreshing to see it not in green. The one that we saw in Pebble with the DDE boys was a sort of, you know, flip paint job, abstract take on green, but this is something totally different. And they finally have an interior on this now, so it's starting to get real. Yes, when Aston Martin launched this, they were very specific in saying that we're going head on for Ferrari, we want to whoop the SF90, we're going for a Nürburgring lap, record time. It's a thousand brake horsepower, 850 horsepower from the twin turbocharged flat plane crank V8 engine, full carbon tub. It's got hybrid drivetrain at the front, which makes up that 1000 horsepower, and they're making 999 of them. And uh, I, I think they're about to drop the mic with this thing because, I mean, aesthetically, it's absolutely stunning. And if they hold up their end of the performance bargain, this thing's going to rip. Looks awesome as well. 10 of these. They only made Just, two alloy cars and uh -huh. 10 cars all together. And this is the second alloy one built. Uh -huh. This is wow. the New York City uh, Auto Show car, 1967. Really? Wow. This Thank car drove like a dream I on bet. the tour. Yeah. How long has it been in ownership for? The car was purchased in 1994. Oh wow, so some time there. Yeah, the car belongs to John Shirley. He lives in Seattle, Washington. Yeah, it's a real honor to even see one of these. There's you not know? one in Europe, they're all no. somewhere else. The other one is the other alloy cars on the East Coast, owned by a long-term owner. The Churchill Cup for the most exciting design is Lord Bamford in his 1933 Rolls-Royce Phantom II Continental Sports Coupe by Freestone and Webb. Congratulations, Lord Bamford. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Lord Bamford. And thank you once again for bringing all of your pride to this. Your beautiful cars here in the Sun Preview at Glen Palace. We hope you return many more times. That was a uh, genuine honor to be there. Like when we first turned yes, up today, right. being completely truthful, completely out of my depth. I've learned a lot, been around some incredibly esteemed judges, lots of experience, uh, we're old and new, 
Uh, like I said, I felt like I was booked as the wild card, but uh, weirdly enough, we all came to the same conclusion. So congratulations to everyone involved. It's been a really amazing occasion. And now we're gonna uh, hit the road and get to our next concourse. Well, this is pretty cool. Um, we are in the grounds of Hampton Court Palace which in itself is a treat. Now, there is a Concorde d'Elegance taking place uh, over there somewhere. And uh, I'm currently navigating my way around what uh, appears to be the grounds or parkland of Hampton Court Palace. Uh, we're in the GT4 RS. M might I add the freshly painted GT4 RS. And we're gonna be putting this car on display this weekend. But first of all, we've gotta find out where we're going. And we're also, while we're here, I mean, look at this place, it's absolutely stunning. While we're here, we're also taking delivery of the Aston Martin DBS, which is right in front of us. What do you think, Tom Prime? I like it a lot. It looks good, it huh? Looks sick, it look, I mean, and that's in the shade, and it yeah, still yeah. looks pretty punchy. In a minute, we've got this golden hour sunshine. Look at this. Ooh. Is this our as well? Yeah, oh, yeah, these, just these sort of, coachwork pinstripes bringing out the accents. They have nailed the calipers, like the finish of the calipers is stunning. So excited for this. It's the first time I'm gonna see this paint in sort of pro proper sunlight. When we did the handover a few days ago at Aston, it was sort of overcast. <laughs> oh. And it didn't pop like that. That is phenomenal. The paint. Wow. But you want to see the paint from this side. It's, it's incredible. Wow, wow, wow. Don't worry, that crunching sound is metal on stones, not the car. Wow. That warm summer as well, sort of end of day, six o'clock, August summer. Crikey. That is something to behold. I'm so proud of the guys that did this. Right, transportation complete. The guys at works are pretty thorough, but we're gonna take out the protective wrapping just now. Ooh, I still can't get over this thing. Okay, take off this one. All right, clean interior, looking fresh. Look at that paint. Honestly, I'm blown away by that. Right, while the sun's good, we've got to get a shot with the GT4 RS. Freshly painted as well. Wow, this is going to be such a shot. Sit this nicely behind it. We've got golden hour. Oh, we just keep it like this. So <laughs> Sounds like a different kind of website, <laughs> that, mate. What do you want? We'll do, this. Do, it as, do it as it is now, yeah, yeah. and then, yeah, we'll, then we'll switch it up. <laughs> Still <laughs> us. <laughs> Shot. What? Behind the scenes. On Earth. Look at the that! Edit, the edited photos. It's going to look so good. Wow. Makes my job easy, this does. <laughs> the sunlight's perfect. Okay. It, it literally couldn't be any more perfect. Thanks very much for bringing those down. I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you. It always gives you a great sense of appreciation for what goes into organizing an event. We're effectively behind the scenes at Hampton Court Palace the day before it opens. Um, I mean, it's cool because all of the cars are starting to turn up. This is somewhat of a guess the car game. I'm going for that being a SP1. What do you think? SP1? For sure. Based on that slant, that's definitely an SP1. But having a particularly awesome insurance policy uh, from First Point, um, arranged by Chubb, um, I've now been asked to move some very special cars. So come and check this out. Okay, behold, the casual Enzo and F50 were about to maneuver into place. Where are these going? Just around there. Just, just around the corner. Yeah, you can take the F50. It's not a bad, it's not bad sentence. Thing. Okay, as far as Thursdays go, this is up there. Now two things, the last F50 I drove was totally straight piped. The second thing, the second thing, I think that ends up straight piped. <laughs> the second thing, the F50 has the coolest dashboard instrument cluster in the game. Yeah, this one's totally 
totally standard. I mean, even slow, it's cool, right? I mean, look at that dash. I mean, it's so far ahead of its time. Like, when it launched, this thing must have been unbelievable, because it's wild now. Okay, that's the sound of the nose lift going up. Okay, so really, uh, that's quite an interesting sort of example of driving these things. Most of the time, if I was to share an F50 on the channel, it would be fairly flat out, like the link below. But driving it around, no one ever talks about that. No one ever talks about what they're actually like to maneuver and drive slowly. So anyway, here's the Enzo. Look at that for a scene. It is a truly beautiful event. Hampton Court, what an amazing occasion. So as the number plates would suggest, both of these cars owned by the same person. As far as two car garages go, <laughs> that's, that's up there. Look at this, it's like the key from my, my filing cabinet key here. Yep, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> Crazy. Honestly, Hampton Court Palace is absolutely stunning. Look at the courtyard here. Look at that. I mean, again, tomorrow, this whole place will be totally packed. So to be able to be here after hours, as it were, is truly special. It's got a, definitely has a Hogwarts feeling to it. Look at it. This is so gorgeous. Imagine doing a photo shoot here. <laughs> what? Hey, this is incredible. Wow. <gasps> Mate. You've got the engine cover the same as the car. Yeah, I can see you're happy with that. <laughs> Okay, Mate, it's actually a yacht. Look at this. I love the seats. Yeah, I want to do that. Look at oh, and on the door as well. It's actually like a teak deck on it. You can tell it's unbelievable. It's stunning. That's truly special. You know you're not going to drive out of here with this. Someone's going to snap this up tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, as well. What a machine. So here's an example of something truly next level. There's a casual Lamborghini Cyan parked up ahead of the event tomorrow. I know this, I say this a lot, but the camera is really not doing this thing justice. Definitely photos. I mean, just to see one of these in the wild is incredible. But the sculpture of the thing, just look at that. Details like this, look, it's got this copper faded paint look it starts very distinct here then blends out into the black roof line tricolore detailing here copper accents and highlighting all over the place matching with these wheels this little lamborghini detailing on the wing mirrors the wing is crazy that's a full articulating active aero wing naturally aspirated high roving v12 yeah to see one of these here that's truly special Right, light is dropping. Got a video to edit, turn it around tomorrow. We're dropping the, uh, the unveiling on the channel of the, the freshly painted DBS. So looking forward to your reaction on that one. Cheeky, Yaris has made it back. Right, we need to respray this thing. So it's been yellow for about 18 months. It's been fun. It's definitely studded out from the average color palette that comes a standard on a GR Yaris. So comments below, we're gonna take this to Logic and we're gonna respray it and there's some mods coming. So what color should we paint our GR Yaris? Okay. Fast life to fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past driven. Look, we are not the same, this is not a game. I've been swerving through the city in and out of lane. 